Hey, what up, y'all? Welcome back. It is Tuesday at 7.30, which means it is time for us to check in with the head man from LSU football. That's right. I'm talking about Coach Ed Ogeron. Coach, what's going on, man? How you doing this morning? Good morning, man. I saw pictures of you on the beach in Cabo, man. You've been working out, huh? Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, look, man. You know how to butter me up. That's a great way to start this interview. I feel incredible now. Uh, I'm just oh, trying man. to be like you and Jake, man. Uh, I've, <laughs> I, I think we've all seen the pictures of you running shirtless. We know you're holding it down. If I can, if I can hold it down when I'm your and my dad's age, we'll be in. Uh, we'll be in good spot there. Uh, all right, coach. Well, you kind of disarm me here, uh, but let, let, let's let, let, let's start with this though. Uh, because this was kind of the big news of the weekend. It's not something that was wholly unexpected. Uh, it's kind of something that's been floating around the edge for a while, but that was the transferring of uh, TJ Finley. Um, what was it like in terms of that process, how it played out, when did you know, and and kind of what do you think comes for uh, TJ Finley next? You know, TJ did everything right. He said, Coach, I, I need to have a meeting with you. Very heartfelt. It was a very hard decision for him. Uh, he felt that it was the best decision for him in his career. Obviously, I asked him, tried to uh, have him stay, you know, and uh, I think the world of TJ, and uh, I think he's a great young man. I think he's a great quarterback, but he felt that there was something that he needed to do, but I got to say, he did everything right. He did it first class, and we wish him the very best wherever he goes, wherever he goes, someone's going to get a great young man, a great quarterback. Yeah, it's uh, it feels like a, a while since that's kind of been the case too, where you could have so much good in the LSU quarterback room that somebody almost has to kind of transfer out to to find their fortune elsewhere. So now, obviously, or I guess I'll ask you: Is now the spotlight on Miles and Max and Garrett, the guys remaining? Is that spotlight even kind of intensified now that that race has even uh, tightened up a bit? Sure, it looks like that. You know, obviously Garrett's going to have a chance, but as we saw in the spring game, I think Garrett knows you know, he's, he's going to have to acquire a little bit more experience. But uh, those guys are neck and neck right now. Two great quarterbacks. Uh, I believe in both of them. Both of them got great families, great leadership. Uh, let the best man win. And uh, we're going to go through camp, and uh, we're going to decide uh, towards the end of camp who's the best quarterback for our football team. And coach, you and I have talked about this so many times, but now with, with the transfer portal, I mean, you got sixteen hundred players almost in the transfer uh, portal across the country, and you know that's something as a coach, I, I know that you've got to pay attention to, like not even like now, but like all the way leading up to the season and into camp to make sure that your numbers are the right way. It's just completely changed the way college football, yeah. like we've always known it. You know, Jake, it, it's you know sixteen hundred players. In a transfer portal, but way too much, as you and I, I think yeah. we all, T Bob, agree on that. And uh, I, I don't know if it's healthy like that as far as getting that many players transferring, but that's the world we're living in. The problem is, is that when a player leaves, you can't replace them with an initial. And right now, we only have one initial left. Yeah. So we lose, we lose a player, especially at, at, a, at, a, at a position like quarterback, is what do you do? You know, uh, yeah. What, where do you use where do you use that scholarship strategically? I, we do know we have needs, but I need to find out what's going to go on with our football team to use that scholarship in the right way. Yeah, and coach, I know this one's hard to answer, but you make a great point. I mean, it counts against your hard twenty five, and you're given eighty five scholarships to be the limit. Can you see with this new transfer rule and so many players in the portal that maybe they make that switch and it goes towards your eighty five and not your twenty five here in the next couple oh, of years? Hopefully, hopefully we need we need some relief to where we can replace. I hope it goes one for one. If right. you lose a guy, you you know you get another initial. You, yeah. I mean, you should be able to sign another guy, but that's my opinion and my opinion only. Talking to Coach Ed Ogeron here on off the bench, uh, Coach, you kind of take us into what exactly goes on in this time period right now. Uh, the haze in the barn as far as spring is concerned. Some roster things being figured out. Uh, but, you know, the, the young commits or the full class not quite here yet. It's yeah. so like, what what do these next few weeks look like for LSU football? Okay, first of all, at 8 o'clock, we're having a meeting with Tommy Moffat. Uh, we're going over all these specific strengths and weaknesses of every one of our players heading into summer program. Uh, our guys are doing voluntary workouts right now. Most of them went home. Uh, some of them are doing voluntary workouts on their own. Uh, we are game planning uh UCLA right now, uh, we are spending four days on UCLA. Uh, next week, we'll spend four days on our next opponent. 
So it, it, it's a busy time. I mean, we're, we're game planning, we're self scouting, uh, we're getting our guys ready, and then our, our coaches uh, on the weekend are taking a little time off, much needed, but getting fresh, getting ready to go. Well, and, and I guess what's crazy is on top of game planning, self scouting, roster management, transfer, all these other things. Uh, I mean, recruiting about to be open once again. When yeah. is it, Jake? I think in June when, when things open yeah. back up. Uh, so, what yeah. kind of what what are y'all's plans for that time period? Yeah, you mentioned that. You know, we have two power power hours a day: one at one thirty, one at five o'clock. We call in players, actually, and get them to camp. We already have let's see, six, uh, eleven. Um, we're already about about 17 official visits scheduled wow. in June. Wow. And that's not counting unofficial visits. And uh, so every every day in June is going to be packed, uh, ready to go with all our camps, and obviously getting our guys evaluated. Uh, you know, I think one of the great things that I love, and I know you guys do too, is track. You know, we yeah. have the state track meet right there. I can't go down there, but we had a lot of great prospects. We put on some great times. We congratulate them with all that stuff. And uh, we just so we're monitoring everything our guys are doing right now. And Coach, I know you're excited to get this uh, last signing class into campus and see what you know what they're made of, what kind of shape they're in. Cause I, I remember Coach Moffitt calling me like late April, early May when I was signed with LSU, and I was actually on a riding lawnmower, Coach, and I was mowing the grass, and he said, Hester, do me a favor. He said, turn that riding lawnmower off. I said, okay. He said, do you have a push mower inside? I said, yes, sir. He said, get your ass on that push mower <laughs> and start pushing that grass right now to get in shape. And so I know he's looking forward to seeing what kind of shape this class is in as well. Yeah, we, and you look at a guy like Matthew Langwell, state champion. Chris Hilton, state champion. You know, think about those yep. guys coming in. I can't wait to see those guys. Jack Beth, who I heard tremendous things about. Savion Jones, those guys, Brian Thomas. Then Mike Jones, I'll transfer home. I ain't been in yeah. Medford the first time from Clemson. I can't even see him. So, uh, you know, I can't wait to see all those guys come in. Corey Conner coming in. You know, uh, Sage Ryan. Think about that. Armani Gillis, Jalen Sneed, Malik Neighbors right there from Como High School. You know, all these great players coming in. And probably one of the best defensive linemen that we signed since we here, Bryce Langston. Yeah. So, uh, I'm excited to see those guys. But, you know, as you know, T. Bob and Jake, they say, <laughs> they end for a rude awakening. Yes, they but, are. But, but, but they get introduced to Mr. Tommy Moffat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget him uh, telling us day one that uh, he doesn't care if the if the train hits you on the way over, uh, drag your bloody ass into the weight room on time. Uh, so, so Coach, because whenever everybody does show up, you got the full team in there then, uh, and, and you have this like full team meeting where, where you kind of set the tone. With the freshmen yeah. specifically – what is the message to those young guys? Because, like, you've you proven in the past, it doesn't matter yeah. who you are. If you're a freshman, you will play if you're the best guy. And when you look at maybe a position like running back or elsewhere, like, there is playing time to be had at spots. So what's your kind of message yeah. to the guys that show up in June? Compete. No one came in here to sit on the bench. That's it, but, but you got to compete. And you're going to find out this is a different world. Number one, go to class. Be early. Protect the team. Do the right thing. You guys know what hey, the go to college is time management. Get the hey, get hang around with the winners. Uh, do the right thing on a daily basis. Get acquainted. And, you know, don't come in. Hey, I'm a five star. Beat my chest. Be humble, but work. Do everything by work and by example. And look, I'm looking at this running back board. That was a uh, that was a weakness in the spring. We have one, two, three, four, five, six scholarship running backs. And two outstanding walkers. So we got eight running backs going into camp. I'm fired up about that. There you go. Uh, and, and then, coach, I know something else that you got to be fired up about. You're, you're already seeing in some of these LSU spring sports stadiums back fully open. It looks like everything's training in a great direction. Yeah. Uh, you getting hyped up for maybe a maybe a full Tiger Stadium come fall time? Yeah, as you know, T. Bob, Jake, that makes a difference. Yep. So, yeah. You start down the Tiger Walk, twenty thousand people. Waiting on you, the energy we feed off of that in the Tiger Stadium. And it makes a difference for the opposing team. I've been on the other side too. I mean, you coming in the Tiger Stadium, I mean, you know, you, you, your antenna's up because it's going to be loud. It's going to be intimidated. I can't wait for 102,500 uh, when we open up against the Mackney State Cowboys. 
<laughs> that, that, that will be a, a fun one <laughs> to watch for sure. Hey, uh, speaking of openers, like you open the season, you're going to be on the road in the Rose Bowl against UCLA. And so this big stadium and everyone that's ever played football has always wanted to play in the Rose Bowl. And I want to ask you this, like when you have an opener like that against a brand team in UCLA and in that stadium, I've got to imagine you can use that as motivation as well to tell your players, hey, we can't wait. we got to get ready. We're playing this team in this stadium and we got to be ready yeah. to go. Yes, you know, when you have an opener like that, uh, it puts a little pep in everybody's step. You know, we're going to UCLA. You know, hey, UCLA lost lost uh, a couple of games by a couple of points last year. And uh, they're an up-and-coming team. And Chip Kelly's a good coach, and they got good players. And, you know, just like we did for uh, when we went we went to Jerry's World, we went to Dallas, you know, at Big Gondola. Man, I, I needed to see it the day before, so we all went, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't going to look at it the day of the game, see, Bob. I was going to get nervous. That thing, that thing <laughs> played too tall for me, man. But we and we you know I, we you know, we went to Cowboy Stadium, we went and look around, man. The guys took pictures, they were relaxed, and all that stuff. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Well, I'll take them to the Rose Bowl, let them see it. But the next day we show up is to win football games. Yep. Mm. Oh my God! Right around the corner, man. Uh, time's flying. Only a couple of months left. Uh, Coach O, thank you so much for waking up on this Tuesday with us. Oh, always. Hey, I gotta tell y'all one story, man. Yesterday morning, we start we start the staff meeting. And we start talking about UCLA, and I hear some. I, I, I hear a, an older gentleman just pounding the table with John Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got he some was, UCLA stories. He, he was chomping at the bits. So I have to remind him that we weren't playing on this side. <laughs> how old, how, Coach, how, how old is John Robinson nowadays? Uh, he, he'll never tell me. He's 80 plus. <laughs> he just tells, I asked him one day, and he tells me one thing, the next day he tells me another. I just know it's 80 plus. Hell yeah. Hopefully, I'm still holding it down to 80 plus like so Coach Rob. Me. No doubt He's about it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you, man. All right, Coach. You have a great day. Thank you so I'm much, up. man. Coach Joe, each and every Tuesday here at 730. It's 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 such a 24-7 grind, man. I mean, you're getting insight into it there. We're, we're sitting here in May when most of the players are at home and they're still game planning, roster management, getting 17. What did he say? 17 official visits in, yeah, in the in month June. of June alone. It's only 31 days. March, April, May, June. There's only 30 days in June. And only 30 days and 17 visits. Almost a daily a day of visits. I love, so uh, I love the knuckles. It, yeah, it, look, it, it's something we all know. It's like it's full time. It's always on. And now the recruiting is opening back up. It, it's going to go back to what we know it to be. But it, Coach O made a great point. Like if they would have been able to recruit this last week when the track championships were literally right across the street, mm. they could have went and, and, and gone over and seen prospects run amazing hundreds and two hundreds and four hundreds and all these things. And, you know, those are opportunities that they've always had. And now they're finally getting those opportunities back. And you've talked about it, and we all know that first group that goes to that first camp, get ready to work. Yeah. Those coaches haven't been able to work out oh, saying, campers yeah. in a long time. You just thought that old Miss camp back in the day was hard. Just wait, <laughs> just wait till this <laughs> one. I don't know. If they, I don't know if they're still <laughs> going to do it like that. But it, but it's going to be it's going to be tough for sure. Um, uh, I bet the Baines were in your face and you were having to swoop all day long, constantly, yeah. constantly. As I was just pile driving people. All right, we got to go. Let's close out hour number one next. I got a really cool video. I'm going to show y'all on the uh, on, on the other end of this break. So keep locked right here off the bench.